Hey guys, NSC85, continuing on with my Battle Arms development lightweight build. This is now the upper receiver portion where I will be building the upper receiver. Make sure and check out part one where I build the lower receiver. So for the upper receiver, you will notice right off the bat that there is no forward assist. Again, lightweight being the mindset here. I mean, even the brass deflector has been machined out. So they've really done a great job at the lightweight stuff. I, I saw these at SHOT Show 2015 and was super impressed. So had to get one. So we're gonna build the upper now. I'm just gonna go over the components that I'm gonna be using and the tools right before we get started here. <clears throat> I will be using the Battle Arms Development Titanium Lightweight Gas Block. And this is a, a little bit smaller diameter because I also have the Battle Arms Development Lightweight Rigid Barrel. I'll take this out so you can see it. And this is one awesome barrel. You can even see that their detail attention to detail there with the logo you can see that it's fluted battle arms development light rigid it's one and eight twist 223 wild or wildy however you want to pronounce it chamber it is button rifled stainless steel so this is 16 inches and this is the barrel that i'll be using I will also be using a lightweight titanium bolt carrier group. Uh, the carrier is titanium, the bolt and the gas key are still correct. This is by St. Croix Tactical, or SCT. And this is actually a somewhat local company to me. They're just right across the border into Wisconsin from Minnesota. Um, really impressed with their stuff so far. Really good prices. Uh, the staking is fantastic. Everything is just done the right way and machining's great and again this is titanium so it's really lightweight now because of this being titanium and things may be moving a little bit quicker than normal I went over this again in my other video but I'm also utilizing a different buffer system that was recommended to me by Battle Arms Development and it's called the flat line buffer system and that's actually from a company in Nevada called Hilzebeck I think it's Hilzebeck Firearms so I will have all the information down below in the description box. Just click show more. I'll have links to all the stuff that you see in front of you. Uh, the bolt carrier group, the upper, all that stuff. Uh, I'll also be utilizing some stuff from Fortis. I'm gonna use a angled uh, key mod grip for the Fortis Rev 2 rail. And the Rev 2 is the same as the first version of the Rev, except it has key mod on the bottom instead of a, another pick and tinny rail. So a little bit more lightweight. This uses just a regular barrel nut. But we'll go over the installation of that. I'm also using the Fortis hammer charging handle. And then for the optic, do 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 do. <laughs> I'm gonna be using a Trigicon. Yes, Trigicon, RMR. Look at that bad boy. Usually you see these on pistols, but Cross Machine and Tool or CMT Tactical actually has a riser for the AR-15. So I will be using this on top of the upper for my optic. I will not be using a dust cover either. The muzzle brake that I'll be using is a Rainier Arms Mini Comp. Keeping lightweight in mind. So let's go ahead and get started. Get the upper into the vise. Get the barrel installed. So here I have my Geisley Reaction Rod in my vise. Here's the upper receiver. I'm going to take the barrel and apply some Aeroshell 33MS grease. Everyone asks me if Aeroshell 33MS is needed. I don't know, it's in the technical manual so that's what I use. And I'm just going to apply this on the barrel extension. So that's about all you need. See this here, that notch just goes right into place, right there. You should be able to push in, if you can't, you can use a rubber mallet. Just get that on the end there. So now I will go ahead and slide this over. All 
All right, so I got that into place. I'll be using a regular barrel nut. So I'm just going to apply some grease to the threads. And the regular free float barrel nut, the notches will face this way. Go ahead and slide this on. Okay. Use my torque wrench. I have it set for 30 foot pounds. The reason you offset the torque wrench is because of the added length of the barrel nut wrench. You don't want to over torque it. So again, doing 30 foot pounds initially here. So there's 30 foot pounds. Let's see if we're aligned. I'm going to use a breaker bar to loosen it because you do not want to use your torque wrench to loosen it. But we're just going to loosen and tighten it a few times here. And then you're going to retorque it until you have clearance here for the gas tube to go correctly. If you get your barrel nut torqued down correctly, you'll know it's installed if your gas tube slides right in, which mine does. And I know that it's properly torqued and lined up. So now we'll go over the gas block installation. Gas block is super easy to install. This is a set screw style. So you just want to make sure that your set screws are backed out enough so you can slide it over. The gas tube, obviously, the port faces down. You're going to pound your pin in. I have a separate video that shows exactly that. So you can check that out. But otherwise, I went ahead and removed the set screw that is directly opposite of the gas port. And that allows me to see if I have it properly aligned for the dimple, which is right about there. Once you have it lined up, I'll go ahead and tighten this one first. Just enough to keep it in place while I put this set screw in that goes into the already pre-drilled dimple. And now the gas block is installed. Now we'll move on to the muzzle device and then the rail. Okay, for muzzle device installation, you'll need your muzzle device. I'm using the Rainier Arms Mini Comp and then you'll need a crush washer. Just put a little bit of grease on the threads. Put your crush washer on. You want it to flare outward. You can see there's a smaller end and a larger end. You want it to flare out. And then you'll want to, whatever muzzle device you're using, there's proper timing more than likely for it. Mine is the ports at 12 o'clock, which are these here. So I'm going to See where we're at here. So it looks like we have to come this way a little bit. And basically what you're going to do is you're going to, you're tightening it, loosening it and tightening it, and you're crushing the washer until it's timed correctly, but you don't want to over crush it because you want it to be torqued. This is where it's very important to have proper support for your barrel. That's why I use the reaction rod because it puts all the torque in the correct place. tightening it and loosening it. Remember to carefully check because you don't want to go past it. You don't want to go past the timing and then have to come back. You want to tighten it to the correct timing. Just go slow, be patient. And there we are. Properly installed muzzle device. Now we just need to put the rail on, and this thing's pretty much done. For the Fortis Rev rail, it's two pieces. It dovetails into here. You're going to take these apart, 
slide this over. And make sure it aligns correctly. Should go right over the barrel nut. Flip this over. Align the dovetail. And then we'll take our four screws. Just screw these into place. And I'm going to alternate between each one here. Kind of like if you were doing a scope. Turn it back around. It's a little bit misaligned, so we're gonna go like this, get it straight, and then I'm gonna take, I'm just gonna take my uh, ACOG that I happen to have laying around here. <laughs> and I'm gonna put this so it goes on both the upper and the rail. And that'll keep the upper aligned to the rail. And then I will continue to tighten these down. Alternating between each one. So now the rail is installed. I'll go ahead and get the optic installed. Put the bulk carrier group and the charging handle in, get it together, and we'll take a look at it. All right, here it is, all complete. This is without a magazine. Let's see what we are at. Get it stopped moving. I am pleased with that. So let me zoom out here. We'll get a full view of it. Saber tube, lightweight selectors, Trijicon RMR on the CMT riser, Fortis Rev 2 rail, the angled foregrip key mod. Man, that barrel is sweet. I am pleased. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this video as well as part one. Check NSZ85 out on Instagram and Facebook. Thanks for watching guys. Have a good day.